Okay, cool. So, hello everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to this talk on writing automation content using uh, Ansible developer tools. Uh, my name is Ganesh and I work as a uh, senior principal software engineer for uh, Ansible engineering. I'm a long time Ansible and uh, I have been focusing on working on developing Ansible content and uh, recently Ansible developer tools and uh, uh, a step ahead uh, working on the AIB suggestion uh, uh, for the project called as Wisdom. Uh, I am available on Twitter at Ganesh634 and on GitHub as Ganesh R. So this is the agenda for today's talk. Uh, we'll go through a bunch of Ansible developer tools. We'll talk about uh, the tools that the uh, team has been working on uh, over the last two years or so. Uh, we'll do a deep dive on uh, some of the Ansible Navigator commands. We'll talk about execution environment and an Ansible Builder. And then finally, we'll go through uh, uh, using how to use Ansible extension with uh, VS Code and how that would ease the process of developing uh, Ansible content. Uh, so traditionally, Ansible, uh, all the plugins were part of Ansible package. And uh, post collection, fail, uh, collection uh, split, uh, the content, most of the content was moved into uh, Ansible collections. And then came uh, the Ansible execution environment, that is a container uh, based uh, solution to package and distribute Ansible uh, plugins. So uh, when we did that transition, writing uh, writing or developing Ansible content was uh, not that easy. Uh, that's where uh, the focus on developer tools team, uh, developer uh, developer tools started, and uh, we decided to uh, build a couple of new tools to make the process of developing Ansible content in your development environment and shipping that into a production. So time difference uh, between uh, write, developing the content and shipping it into production. Uh, should be as minimal as minimal as possible, and with that goal, uh, we started working on this uh, uh, project. The first one is Ansible Navigator. Uh, it is a uh, UI-based tool uh, for uh, introspecting your Ansible uh, environment and your execution environment. Uh, so I will talk about uh, what is E, uh, and uh, I will talk about what are uh, uh, commands Ansible Navigator support uh, in uh, coming slides. Then Ansible Lint is a static analysis tool. It is uh, used to do, uh, used to run uh, static and runtime analysis for your Ansible content, and uh, it basically follows uh, good practices that are uh, that have came from through uh, community experience over the uh, over the years. So Ansible Lint is around a decade old pro project, and it is a lot more stable. And we are adding new rules uh, as we learn better practices as we evolve uh, through coll uh, through collections and uh, execution environment. Then Ansible Builder is a new tool, a relatively new tool that is uh, used to augment uh, the process of building a container image uh, that would hold your Ansible content. Uh, then uh, VS Code Ansible extension is a uh, Red Hat supported Ansible extension that is being published on Marketplace. Uh, Ansible content scaffolding is uh, what would help you uh, develop your uh, plugins, uh, develop your modules quicker. Uh, some of it was shown by Sumit earlier. And there are more in Python, that which includes the PyTest plugins uh, for unit tests and running integration tests. Then we have plans to add Molecule as part of a uh, supported offering uh, for Ansible Automation Platform and so on. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Ansible Content Navigator. Uh, it is a command line tool. Uh, it has uh, two interfaces. Uh, it's a text-based user, user interface uh, and used for running and developing the Ansible Automation content. Uh, it is used to uh, review execution environment. So when we made the shift towards execution environment, there was no tool uh, as such that was present that would tell you what is uh, what are the contents of the execution environments or what are the plugins that are part of the E. So Ansible Navigator uh, was uh, developed to solve that problem. Then uh, review collection is again uh, uh, you can review collections that are installed on your local system or that are part of your execution environments. Then uh, review in inventories and then. Run playbook. Uh, ideally, uh, if you have to run a playbook, you you develop a playbook and you have to run uh, against a container image. You would have you would have to handcraft the container command and then uh, execute it basically. So Ansible Navigator also simplifies that process for you. Uh, I will show you in the demo how that is done. Uh, so there are two modes. Uh, uh, so it uh, Ansible Navigator uh, supports all the functionality that Ansible playbook supports currently. Plus on top of that, it supports much more functionalities for your uh, collection browsing, uh, documentation browsing, the Ansible config uh, browsing, and it uh, you can run Ansible Navigator in two modes. Uh, one is direct command line interface, and other is a text user interface. Uh, 
so these are the mappings between uh, uh, playbook, uh, the Ansible uh, uh, executables, and the corresponding Ansible navigator commands. So Ansible config, when you run Ansible config, you can uh, do the same uh, through Ansible navigator config command. Uh, uh, Ansible doc is Ansible navigator doc. Ansible hyphen inventory is uh, Ansible navigator hyphen inventory. And Ansible playbook is Ansible na navigator run. So basically, Ansible navigator uses Ansible runner uh, underneath. It and Ansible runner uh, then invokes each of these binaries. So uh, you can think of uh, Ansible runner as a wrapper, wrapper on top of uh, the Ansible executables. And uh, uh, Ansible navigator basically uh, passes the command uh, call to the Ansible runner, and it does its thing. So let me show in my browser. I have uh, installed Ansible Navigator uh, version 2.2 using it, uh, and I, I will run uh, show uh, Navigator run in a text uh, user interface mode. Is the screen visible? Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> will be visible in the stream. <laughs> Is it better? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, I just ran Ansible Navigator command. It took me uh, to a text user interface, and here you can see what are all the subcommands that are supported. Uh, before that, uh, Ansible Navigator has its own configuration file. And uh, for now, it uh, looks for ansible-navigator.yaml uh, within the current working directory. And uh, uh, right now, I have configured, uh, I have given some configuration. I will disable uh, execution environment for now. And I will hit on it again. Uh, so let's say I want to browse to what are all the collections that are installed on my local system. So I'll uh, run hit colon and the name of the subcommand. It will take uh, uh, some time to catalog those collections and uh, show it in a user interface format. Uh, here, I uh... okay. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, it uh, it shows me what are all the collections uh, that are there in my system, and then the version uh, and where those are installed. Uh, so let's say I want to explore what is. You, you just move the mouse. Okay, so if I hit zero, it will take me one level de uh, deeper and it will start showing what are all the um, plugins that are part of that collection. And uh, let's say I want to see uh, what is in cloud formation. Uh, it will, I, I hit a nine, uh, that's the line number where the cloud, I can see cloud formation. When I hit nine, uh, it takes me to the model documentation. And uh, I can uh, go through the documentation, uh, uh, whatever is part of that uh, module doc, the Python file is being rendered here. Uh, go through the uh, uh, examples and all that. So this is a collections uh, command. Then config uh, is basically, uh, it shows what, are, what is the Ansible configuration that is being done uh, in a more user-friendly format. Uh, it shows the name of the configuration, then what is the default value. Uh, the source, whether it is default or it has been set by user or through command line, and the current value. Uh, then there is a run, a lint, uh, and so on. There, there are a bunch of other options uh, that uh, you can see. Then settings is the uh, subcommand to uh, see uh, the Ansible, Ansible Navigator settings. So in here, uh, I have set execution environment parameters that I can see. Uh, now uh, this, uh, this source is being set by the setting file and uh, if I'm passing through command line, it will show that user has passed it to command line. Okay, uh, move back to presentation. Uh, 
So with this brief intro of Ansible uh, Navigator, we'll move on to Ansible Execution Environment Builder. Uh, so why we need uh, Execution Environment in first place? Uh, these are container images that consist of uh, Ansible collections. And uh, these, uh, these container images are self-contained. So for each collection, you will have dependent, its own dependent collections. And those collections will have uh, its own Python dependencies and system dependencies. So if you write your playbook and uh, run against, it might work in your own environment, but if you give the same playbook to someone else and uh, uh, the, the user has to set up their own environment, install the same uh, versions and dependencies that you have. To solve this dependency problem, uh, uh, the execution environment is a uh, solution to that. And uh, uh, it is easily customizable. When you give your execution environment to someone else, they can build, uh, add more collections uh, on top of that and they can create their own uh, execution environments and it is easier to distribute. So once you write your playbooks against execution environment, it is easier to promote it to uh, controller as well. And uh, uh, to help build this uh, environments uh, is what uh, the job of Ansible Builder is. It is a Python package. Uh, you install it as pip install uh, Ansible Builder, and uh, uh, it basically goes to your dependency list uh, from collections. It figures out Python dependencies. It figures out the system dependencies, the collection dependencies, and it. Uh, you just have to mention the name of the collection, and it will take care of uh, rest of the things of building the container file and building the image. I'll uh, show a demo uh, around that. So this is the builder architecture. Uh, it takes three inputs. First is the execution environment YAML file, that is the direct input to the Ansible Builder. Uh, this file contains uh, the collection requirements, uh, what all collections should be part of that execution environment. Uh, then the Python dependencies, requirement.txt is where you mention the Python dependencies. Then the base image that you want to use. Uh, uh, so it, it takes all these inputs and then Ansible Builder supports three subcommands: uh, create, build and introspect. So create basically creates a container file and the build context. Uh, build will uh, take this context and generate an image uh, out of it. Uh, so uh, docker build or podman build is what it runs underneath uh, to create the execution environment image. And introspect is uh, it will uh, go through each of the Ansible collections subdirectories and validate uh, the dependency list and return uh, that list uh, for, to the user. Uh, so, uh, how will we use Ansible Builder and Navigator uh, together? As a developer, we'll use Builder to uh, pull or create execution environment. After that is done, uh, the next step is to develop your playbook uh, uh, for that particular execution environment and then test that playbook using Ansible Navigator uh, run command. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is a supported and portable uh, scalable solution that comes with execution environment and this uh, workflow works for your collections that are installed on the local system as well. So uh, let's go through the demo. So first I'll talk about how to build an execution environment, uh, then uh, review the build using Navigator and run the playbook. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, Ansible Builder has create, build, and introspect. Uh, so I want to build. Uh, let me uh, let me go into the right folder, Builder. Uh, within Builder, I have mentioned uh, the uh, execution environment .yaml file. This is a file that the Builder tool reads. Uh, it has the uh, base image that uh, uh, we have to use to build the uh, execution environment. So I'm building on top of e minimal rel it. It has uh, the Ansible core installed uh, in it. It has just the Ansible core as part of the E. Then uh, in the dependency list, uh, I have mentioned Galaxy. Uh, Galaxy is where the list of collection is mentioned. So this is what is mentioned. Uh, the, for the collection that I will be, uh, the execution environment that I will be building, uh, I want Ansible.scm collection to be part of the new E that I will be building. Uh, then uh, the next uh, is the system dependency. So this is mentioned in bindep.txt. Uh, right now there are no system level dependencies, so it is the file is empty. And Python dependencies are uh, mentioned in requirement.txt. Uh, I have mentioned Ansible Lint. 
the E that is there right now I'm using, it has an older version of Ansible in it. So as part of uh, post-processing, I am removing that Ansible lint and then uh, installing it, uh, installing the newer version of Ansible lint using pip install. So this, these are the files that are input for the Ansible builder. Uh, let me try building. Uh, so this is the command Ansible builder build. Then container runtime I am using Docker. Uh, the tag is uh, you can give anything here. And then hyphen v3 is the uh, verbose option, the logging option. Uh, so when I do this, I have already run this and it has cached uh, the output out, or else it would take a lot longer to build the image. And uh, when you go through the logs here, uh, you can see uh, it first, uh, so somewhere here you will see uh, it is running Ansible Galaxy collection install. Uh, then Ansible Galaxy uh, role install and then uh, pip uh, the post processing, uh, remove Ansible lint and then install Ansible lint in the uh, newer E. Uh, so this creates my uh, execution environment. So uh, the image is created here. Uh, any questions till now? Or if no, I will move ahead. Now I want to introspect what is part of this uh, E. Uh, so I'll uh, start using Navigator for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so first command will run is images. And it will go and fetch uh, the list of images that are part of uh, that that are installed on my system. And then I should see a config management image. I'm in the right place. Is not there. So uh, let's say I want to introspect what is in Creator E. It shows uh, image information, general information, uh, Ansible version that is part of the E and the collections. Uh, let me go to uh, Ansible version. Uh, it basically uh, uh, underlying Ansible Navigator creates uh, the container commands and then uh, run those commands within a container. So it basically volume mounts the current working directory and start running uh, Ansible config, Ansible version commands. So this is what is uh, installed in Creator E, uh, Ansible POSIX, Ansible Windows, AWX, and so on. Now, okay, uh, why it was not working is because in my navigator config file I had uh, done true. I need to set that true. So, So yeah, and then uh, let me try collections. It should show list of collections. Yeah. Uh, so uh, previously, uh, in the base image, Ansible built-in was only there. Uh, I added Ansible SCM, and for Ansible SCM collection, Ansible utils is a dependency. So Ansible Builder took care of uh, downloading that and bundling that as part of the E. And uh, within Ansible SCM, uh, there are two plugins, git away and git here. Uh, git away is basically used to uh, 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 clone, uh, basically used to commit to your remote uh, uh, repository. And uh, so the plugin uh, always runs on execution node and is the short description here. Publish changes from a repository available on execution node to a distant location. And git here is basically it will clone your remote repository into your uh, local machine. Uh, I will uh, demo how to run a, a playbook with this, uh, with uh, execution environment enabled. So this is a sample playbook I have. Uh, 
this playbook, the first task here is git here. It will clone a remote repository. Uh, it is uh, the first task will basically clone this config management 2023 repository from my uh, from my local one. Uh, then it will pick up a random file uh, into uh, it will download the random file into the uh, cloned repository. Uh, and GitHub will basically uh, identify that there, there are changes happened uh, into the repository and it will then push it to the uh, uh, upstream. Uh, now to run this uh, uh, playbook, I just have to do run site.yaml uh, colon uh, run site.yaml, the name of the playbook. And it will uh, take me to the run action prompt. <coughs> Uh, so first is the collect, uh, collect and publish uh, JSON art artifact. So uh, in the uh, top view, you can see multiple plays, all the plays that are there uh, in your playbook, names of the plays. Then uh, one level uh, deep, if you go, uh, you will see task level uh, details. Uh, I want to see what's happening at the first task. The first task is basically uh, cloning the repository. Uh, you can see all the commands that it uses, the module uses to clone the repository. Then the second task basically, uh, uh, it uh, fetches the remote file into my clone repository and the third one uh, is uh, pushes it back to the remote one. And this uh, playbook has is been running against the execution environment uh, that I have provided. So this is the execution environment that I am providing to Ansible Navigator. And uh, you can see that uh, ansible.scm is not part of my local uh, system. And when I do this, uh, it would have created a new branch. Uh, it has created a new branch uh, on the repository. So after you test this uh, playbook, it is ready to be uh, run against a control node, where execution environment is a main uh, way of distributing Ansible content. So that was about Ansible Navigator and Builder. Uh, let's move to uh, VS Code extension. Uh, so uh, VS Code is a uh, IDE that is uh, provided by Microsoft for free. It provides support for uh, multiple uh, languages through extensions. So uh, Red Hat had recently uh, uh, published Ansible extension on the marketplace, uh, and it uh, supports. It, it is basically being implemented as a language server, uh, and it uh, uh, is built on top of language server protocol. It provides uh, Ansible syntax highlighting uh, in your IDE. Uh, then it provides auto-completion for Ansible keywords uh, host name. It supports both static and dynamic host uh, inventory. So when uh, uh, you change your uh, inventory script, you can rerun the Ansible inventory command and uh, it will start showing you all the uh, host names that are part of your, uh, that is part of the inventory. Then uh, all the task names uh, and the valid options. So it will uh, go through all the collections and plugins that are installed on your system. And then it will, uh, as you type, it will start showing you what are all the uh, possible auto completions. Then it provides hover functionality to get uh, task and uh, options description. Uh, it also provides go to functionality, just like any other programming language, when you right click and uh, click on go to definition. This will basically take you to the module documentation, the Python file where the documentation is defined. Uh, then for diagnostic, it uses Ansible lint. Uh, when you change, edit uh, any Ansible playbook in the IDE, uh, it, in the background, it will learn Ansible Lint and uh, start uh, throwing, if there are any problems, it will show you in the problem tab. And it also works with uh, uh, execution environment. Uh, you can enable or disable E if uh, you choose to. Uh, so uh, this uh, extension basically uses language server. Uh, the reason to use that is traditionally, uh, the language server protocol was being developed by Microsoft and standardized in collaboration with Red Hat and Code Envy. And the reason to do that was traditionally uh, to implement features like uh, go to power or the uh, uh, autocomplete features. Each IDE would have its own APIs, and for each programming language, you would have to implement uh, its own in, uh, own implementation and distribution mechanism. And uh, that's why you can see on the uh, on the uh, left side for JavaScript, uh, there is one implementation for Python, there is one for uh, Atom, one for VM, so on for uh, 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 Python and uh, Java. But when uh, LSP is in the mix, uh, you have one implementation uh, on the server side that understands the language. Uh, and that implementation can be in any language. You can write the server in Python or uh, JavaScript or TypeScript or any mm -hmm. language you choose. And uh, any IDE that understands the LSP protocol can communicate to that one 
particular implementation. Uh, so the goal of LSP is to provide language implementations independent of any particular IDE. And uh, the way uh, Ansible language has been implemented, the server has been implemented, uh, right now we have uh, support for VS Code, Vim and Emacs. Um, Uh, so this uh, slide goes a bit into how the communication bit happens between IDE and uh, the server. Uh, so uh, the communication happens over a JSON RPC request. When a user opens a document, uh, it sends a did open uh, a message to the server side. Did open uh, will basically, the server will basically identify this is an Ansible playbook and uh, it is an Ansible language. So at the server side, we run a bunch of Ansible utilities uh, like Ansible config, Ansible inventory, Ansible playbook to identify what are all the uh, collections or plugins installed and then pass it back uh, to the uh, client. So we uh, the server processes the request and passes back to the client to be rendered uh, with, the, with the IDE. Uh, so right now for language server, we uh, support uh, these APIs, do hover, do complete, do validate and do semantic token. So when, once these APIs are being implemented, any client that understands uh, LSP can talk to the server and it is independent of uh, the server implementation is independent of the client implementation. Uh, right now we have, uh, we is, uh, as I mentioned, the client that we have uh, on uh, marketplace is Red Hat supported. Then uh, there is uh, uh, community members have contributed Vim extensions and Emacs extensions and we are uh, welcome, uh, open to uh, have more contributions for more IDEs that you would like to have. Uh, Develop, you would like to develop Ansible on. Uh, go through the uh, demo for this, how you would uh, use Ansible extension uh, in VS Code. Uh, so uh, in the extension tab, uh, uh, type Ansible. I have already installed Ansible. Currently there are these many unique installs. And uh, when, once you install Ansible, uh, you can go to runtime status and check whether it is activated or not. If it is, uh, so first time you open an Ansible document, that's when uh, the ID activates this extension. Uh, so when I uh, click on a playbook, uh, you'll see uh, Ansible language has been identified. Unless and until you uh, don't see the language mode as Ansible, the extension is not activated and you won't be seeing any auto completions or anything. So with this, uh, once you ex uh, install this extension, there are a bunch of settings that comes with this extension. So uh, type Ansible and there are around 25 settings. The first one that you have to set is the uh, interpreter Python. If you are working with a uh, uh, virtual environment, you set the Python path and then it will pick all the uh, Ansible uh, executables, then uh, Ansible lint path. You can individu also individually set that using uh, path here. Uh, but uh, if, if you only set the Python interpreter part, yeah, the extension will take care of loading the right uh, executables from your E. Then uh, there are a bunch of options around uh, using fully qualified collection name or not. So FQCN is basically the recommended way and that is the default option, but if you don't want, you can disable it. Uh, then the navigator path and there are a bunch of options around execution environment. Right now I have enabled EE, uh, the container engine, Docker, Podman, Auto. If Auto is there, it will first look for Podman. If it's not there, it will uh, start using Docker. If both are not there, it will throw an error. Then the execution environment image. So same setting that uh, Navigator has, uh, we have that same in the VS Code extension. Uh, then, yeah, uh, the build that I'm using uh, has Wisdom as well. Uh, so Wisdom is a AI based suggestion, but uh, we'll be releasing that, uh, this feature soon as part of extension. Uh, another feature that is there is, uh, since I have EE enabled uh, in my uh, workspace, when I hover on top of this, it will show all the uh, in, uh, information about what uh, I am using. So previously, this when this feature was not there, uh, uh, user used to uh, means there used, used to be a confusion between whether E was enabled or not, or uh, it is Ansible is being picked from the right location or not. So this information will tell you uh, from where Ansible is picked, uh, what is the E version and uh, what is the collection path and so on. Now uh, another thing I wanted to show is this uh, hover functionality. Uh, now git scm is, no, uh, let me try uh, writing something. Uh, so 
when I type uh, something, it will uh, prompt me uh, the plugins that are part of E. Uh, uh, now, I'm built in DNF and let's say AC. If I'm uh, typing something that is not part of E, let's say uh, I type uh, uh, some another common CLI box. Now this uh, plugin, as we saw earlier, was not part of uh, RE. And you can see Ansible Lint is processing file here. So what it does is uh, it will check whether this is a valid playbook or not. And uh, since this has been not identified as part of E, it will throw an error here that uh, uh, CLI pass is not been identified and your playbook can't be run against the execution element that you have uh, enabled. Uh, now let's say if I go and disable E, So if I have disabled it, and let me reload the window. So in this case, uh, when I disable the E, it will identify, previously it was not showing any uh, hover functionalities for a CLI pass. Uh, in this case, it identified that I'm working on uh, my uh, collections that are installed locally, and it can it will start showing me auto completions for this. So uh, since netconf was not part of this, and now it will start showing me, since netconf is uh, installed on my local machine, it will start showing uh, plugins that are part of netconf collection. But when I look at <coughs> SCM collections, this would be unhighlighted because this is not installed on my uh, system and this is part of execution environment. That's how you uh, you can make sure that the playbook that is there is compatible with E or with your local machine. And yeah, any, any questions till now? Uh, just one last thing. Uh, I had was uh, within uh, uh, within the uh, explorer you can right click and you have an entry point to run uh, the playbook using ansible run or ansible playbook command if i run using ansible playbook it will okay i had changed the playbook so it will not run basically because ansible playbook doesn't identify if you are running within an e or uh, locally so mm. So that was my uh, demo, and uh, uh, just about uh, dev tools, uh, uh, we are available on metric channel uh, here. And uh, if you have any feedback or have suggestions about uh, uh, any of the developer tools project, you can just reach out to all the maintainers uh, on the metric channel. <coughs> and yeah, any questions? If not, that's, that was my talk.